Uh, hi everyone, thank you for joining tonight. I would uh, first like to thank uh, Kevin for the invitation to do this webinar. Um, basically, uh, just a little introduction about me. I'm Garella, as you already know. I'm 23 years old and my passion lies in photography, just like all of you have been here. I appreciate all types of photography, but I mostly capture landscapes and portraits, mainly people, places, you know, whatever strikes me the most. Uh, whatever I capture, it's very important to me that I, I make it instantly recognizable, meaning that when everyone, when, when a person sees an image I've captured, they'd be able to recognize it as one of mine. Ever since I was a little girl, I grew up in an environment in which the arts and entertainment uh, both played a huge role. And being it a hobby or a full-time career as it is, I always knew I was uh, somehow destined to be working in the visual, visual arts, which I am now doing so. Uh, to me, any kind of art is a universal language one can use to communicate with, as I'm sure you all agree. And it's, uh, as, I, as I said, it's truly amazing that when people see your shots, whoever you are, they, they are instantly able to recognize them as yours. Today, uh, my webinar will mainly be on my travel photography, my street photography. Um, as you might have noticed when seeing my social media, I'm a travel lover and a photography lover. And I have to combine them most of the time. Uh, my love for travel photography originated from my eagerness to experience new parts of the world. I enjoy telling stories of the destinations I visit, and I always look, look forward to accompanying these destinations with, with visuals, ranging from beautiful skylines to everyday locals. I love getting to know people, I love discovering new cultures, and looking for new areas to photograph. So, I will now move on and start uh, with my images. Today, we'll be starting off with a few images from my trip to the Canadian Rockies and Alaska, which was truly an, unfor an unforgettable one. So, I will share my screen for you to see the first image. So, I have titled this image, Into the Unknown. My intent for taking this image was to capture the drama that was created from the very, very hazy and snowy day while driving to Bam. Here I, I had just arrived. It was, I was on my way from the airport to my accommodation and we could barely see the road. Um, uh, just to let you know, I wasn't the one driving, so this was safely taken. Uh, I tried to further enhance the feel of the image by darkening the photo all around and just really focusing on the leading lines of the road itself in order to enhance that sense of directing and leading the viewer into some place else. So, uh, the next photos I will be showing. Uh, both show um, reflections, however, in a sort of different way. I'll be explaining. So, when I'm on location and shooting a landscape, especially near a lake, or maybe not a lake, I will, I will come to this later, I'm looking for one of two things. Either calm water that splits the image in half to create this perfect mirror image you can see here, or something with subtle ripples. In this image, we can see the mountains and the little boathouse, which are reflected in the perfectly still waters of a puddle. So this wasn't a lake. It was a large puddle. The lake was towing. It was uh, mid-May. So it served perfectly for this purpose. This technique serves, as you know, to lend the image a strong compositional balance and depth. I included complementary colors, as I do in most of my images. And in this, in this first image, you are seeing 
Um, it is mostly set on cold tones. However, the boathouse is the one thing that stands out in warmer tones. And as you will see later on, this is something that I really love to do with my images. I, I find something that stands out and I capture it. In my opinion, using a reflection in photography can, can spice up an otherwise lifeless photo and turn it into something beautiful. I also add that no tripod was used for this shot and no long shutter space. This, this water was just so still, which made it possible for me to just lie down on the frozen surface and snap this picture. In this image, which is once again showing a reflection, the muted tones, which are again constant throughout my works and the misty conditions, are working perfectly with the gentle, really gentle ripples of the water. And we see once again how the reflections balance the image to give a composition that's pleasing to the eye. In this image, as we saw with the last one, I've made use of complementary colors. Uh, we can see the, the central part of the image, which uh, has the yellows and the greens. The warm tones by the rest of the image is a very muted, grayish, slightly bluish tone. These calm -like shots I've shown were the perfect opportunity to bring the room of birds and go for perfect symmetry of the image. I always want to avoid direct light on the water, which is why a lot of my image, a lot of my images are taken sunset or sunrise, you know, whenever the light is soft enough and whenever I'm enjoying it with my own naked eye, I know that I will enjoy it once I photograph it. Though, as you know, though reflections are sometimes easy to find, they're not that easy to photograph. To get a good picture of a reflection, you first need to find the perfect angle that will bring out this reflection, even if it means lying face down on the ground, doing whatever you have to do. But sometimes it's the only possibility. So this image, for me, it's a little of a one-off when it comes to my style. It's not something I usually capture. However, this was uh, different. A number of viewers have looked at this image, thought that this, this shot was an aerial photo taken with the use of a drone or something like that. However, I don't own a drone and I also travel light. So my aim is to all, always try and challenge myself in creating something that raises questions. Just like the limited amount of equipment I carry on such long trips. In fact, in order to capture this image, all I did was stand on a little wooden bridge on top of this lake, which part of, was partially frozen and partially tall. It was in Yoho National Park, and this this little piece of ice, which seems like a, like a really large surface area, is basically maybe just this size, the size of your screens. In this image, what I like uh, is the contrasting textures, the solid versus liquid, the contrasting colors, the deep rich blue and the icy white. And those basically were what I needed uh, for the components of a balanced image, apart from the obvious composition. So as you can see, the image is split in half exactly, with each side of it containing a different texture and a different color. Thank you, Kevin. I'm seeing the comments. That's OK. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going for, in fact, minimalism. Uh, I, I don't do this much, but yes, this image is, in fact, one of my favorites, so I guess it worked. So, this photo was taken in the town of Huna in Alaska. Uh, Tuna is a, a fishing village, a small fish, fishing village along Ice Strait, and it attracts a lot of fishing and wildlife enthusiasts. In this image, I went for a heads on perspective and a particular composition where the boat's textures and colors would be complemented by the haze uh, on the lake in the background and the mountains further back. Looking back at this image, 
it gives me a sense of serenity, which I am hoping that the viewer can also feel when viewing this image. As with the rest of my images and the ones you've already seen, uh, there's a set of complementary colors here and also textures. There's the reds on the boat, the warm tone, tones on the ground, and there behind in the background you have those muted grayish bluish tones that are very consistent uh, throughout. So, this image and the ones I will be showing next um, were taken on a whale watching trip, also in Huna, in Alaska. I remember the boat I was on um, in order to take these images was quite a small one and only five people were allowed on, on the front deck. We happened to be five photographers, all from around different parts of the world. And that was amazing to me. I could see that we were all shooting the same subject, however, in such different perspectives. And that's the beauty of it. I really wanted to bring out the drama and the mystery in these images from just seeing the way it stayed. Um, this time round, not much complementary colors were used, however, I instead balanced these images between light tones and dark tones. A fast shutter speed was obviously used to shoot these, as unfortunately these little, little humbuck wheel details are only revealed for a split second, so you, got to, you, you have to act fast. Um, we were, when we were on this, on this whale watching trip, uh, our guide explained to us how these humpback whales die for 30 minutes and uh, then basically they own, their tails only show up for these split seconds. So you can imagine on a 2.5 hour whale watching trip waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for these whales to show up. So it was re rewarding to me when <laughs> this little tail show, showed up. This photo as, as you might notice it's very close to my heart and the ones following. Uh, in this image, which is similar to the ones, to the previous ones, uh, this time I included another, another a boat. They were also on a way watching trip. However, I, I could just ignore it. But I wanted to bring out the fact and show the power of nature compared to man-made objects. The size of the whale near the boat, the power, as you can see, th this image gives me that feeling that, look at this boat, it, it, it's really got nothing next to, next to the whale, a few meters away from it. So, this one, this image, was taken when I was walking through a park to the Mandan Point last year in Juneau, Alaska as well. And looking through the trees, um, there, there, was, there was this magical atmosphere in this park, forest, whatever you may call it. These little icebergs were being carved out of the glacier into the Mandenhall Lake. I used the tree branches, as you can see, to create a uh, foreground foreground um, uh, for the image in order to put the focus on the little iceberg. I also darkened the photo while drew out in post to give it this certain kind of feel. A feel that to me feels peaceful to look at, although the meaning behind it is not, not a, much, a much peaceful one because, you know, glaciers are a product of climate, they respond to climate change, and the Mandanol glacier is in fact rapidly retreating used to climate change. So, excuse me. Hello. From Alaska, I'm moving on to Morocco. Uh, I will mostly be showing some street photography from Morocco. Morocco is a beautiful and extremely photogenic country. There are busy markets, ancient medinas, incredible characters, they all lend themselves to the greatest shots, especially in Marrakesh. In Morocco, as in other countries, one must be respectful of the people and
and culture surrounding you. So, unfortunately for photographers who are aiming for great portraits, passers-by do not actually enjoy being photographed. However, there are people who notice you with the camera, who are friendly, and who actually let you take their photo. And that is the most rewarding part, as it would be a real shame since the faces, the smiles, the stares, they speak so many words. This image um, as, you, as you might have also done, I was trying to blend in with a 70 to 100 millimeter lens, which is not very easy to blend in with it. I tried to ignore it, blend in and shoot away. This was taken at the Jamal in the square in Marrakesh at sunset, as you can see. It's beautiful, the square, the golden hour is truly beautiful. The soft golden light was magnificently lighting up the square. In this image, I really wanted to capture the life of these everyday locals, a local family, possibly. In the background, you can see there are shower going on, and as well as other tourists, like me, blending in with the locals' everyday lives, just like I did. In the foreground, I included this other person on purpose, so as to add a little mystery, and to make it feel as if the viewer is the one taking the image, looking over the shoulder of another local. Walking the opposite of my direction, this man struck me. The symmetry of the object he's carrying, the structure and the distance, and the people parted on both sides, it's, I think it's what really gave life to this image. The mystery from not seeing this guy's face gives the photo a more dramatic feel, which is which I tried to enhance to the editing of this image. I darkened everyone and everything except for this guy, which I wanted as my subject. Even though we cannot see his face, I feel like we can understand his story better than we can understand the stories of the people whose faces are exposed to the camera, which happen to just be passers-by. When I saw this guy, it made me wonder where he was going, where he was carrying the object to, who he was giving it to, and I just hope that you, viewing it, can feel the same as I did. This image is one of my favorite street shots in Morocco. Uh, light and shadows, especially around the golden hours, are great for this. Playing around with different shots and getting a feel of what works best for color and for black and white. And, you know, I had to be patient in order to find the face that I truly wanted to capture. Unlike landscape photography, as I said, it requires patience of a different kind. Um, this image, this image, I waited and waited and waited until groups of people, as you can see, they look like tourists, were parted on each side of the image, even though there is a number of people surrounding the man. He is looking as if he is in his own little world. world. And it's almost as if I can understand what's going through his head. So, as busy as this image might seem, I chose to do it in black and white so that we can focus more on the emotional state of this guy rather than on everything going on around him. What really struck me inside this mosque, the Hassan Mosque, was this woman sitting peacefully just down the staircase, wearing red attire, which was perfectly, perfectly being hit by the incoming sunlight from the rooftop of the mosque. I wanted to highlight the background's little detail, but only slightly, as it plays an important part in telling this image's story. The detail in the background in my opinion, complemented the subject nicely, as that bluish tint you can see um, is, is complementary to the reds in the woman's attire, which, which is giving a deeper aesthetic, which, as you know already, I look for in most of my images. The background also has a very small amount of distractions, however, the little details in, in it are 
are really what, what make it recognizable to the place, uh, to the time of day. Simple backgrounds are key to creating clear and high quality images, in my opinion, that my audience will be able to see, to register and respond to. No matter what, when, where they see it. Uh, I saw the question that you are wondering what she was thinking about or <laughs> whatever. And I'm, I'm glad that you are thinking about this because that was my main aim for you to be able to think and wonder what this woman is thinking. So, I should accomplish it here. So. From Morocco, we went directly to Brazil. This image was taken in the Santa Marta favelas. Uh, on the hilltops that overlook Ipanema and Copacabana, um, where tens of thousands of Brazilians um, have built their homes out of whatever materials they could lay their hands on in the city slums, known as the favelas. These favelas are shaped by contrasts. The daily life for most of these kids is very basic, yet they remain so happy. They're the happiest kids actually I've ever seen. Their feet are dirty, their hair is messy, but their eyes are sparkling with so much joy at the simplest of, of things. I wanted to keep this image simple as to reflect the simplicity and innocence of this young man's life, who was just so happy to be showing us tricks with his deck of cards. In fact, the composition is quite a simple one, with no other subjects or other distractions other than the young man. I also edited, um, edited this one in black and white in order to let my viewer focus on the subject's emotional state and also to create a relationship between the contrast in my image and the contrast in the favelas. So, the images seem to have got jumbled, slightly jumbled up and I went back to Morocco here. Um, really, I, I've, I haven't got much, much to say on this image. Uh, what I felt on this beach, it's a beach in Casablanca along the Atlantic coast. And really, on this beach, there aren't things that you see every day, that we see every day especially, the horses and camels. I, ob I obviously had to capture this, as to me it felt magical. Even the lights, the, the sky, the warmth in this image, it felt somehow mystical. Back to Brazil. Sorry for that little mix up. So, this image is one of my favorite street shots once again. Uh, in order to capture this one, I had to act pretty fast. The bus was just passing by and I was waiting for the red lights in order to be able to cross the road. This man's facial expression when he looked at me for that split second was haunting, to say the least. Uh, it was intense. I felt as if he told me his story through his eyes, which is what I wanted to pass on to you as well. I wanted my picture to just speak for itself, the subject to be able to convey his emotion through my photo. It is a simple image, yet with a very subjective story to every person viewing it. Thank you for your comments. They're popping up on the right of my screen. Yes, I, I, I love this image, honestly. I mean, his face is one that I, I have been looking to capture my whole life. This one is also taken in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. Um, uh, it was on Ipanema Beach. My intent for taking this photo was to capture the drum created from the almost silhouette of a stranger and I love the mood that the car headlights were giving as a, as a backlight. I tried to further enhance this feel by darkening the photo all around, which is another thing that I love to use, to, to, another technique that I love to use in most of my work. And just focusing on the silhouette and the palm trees as a simple backdrop. I wanted the viewer's attention to go directly to the subject, who looks intriguing and somehow mysterious. The light and color lit by the headlights behind the subject 
were creating that lovely hazy atmosphere. The haze you can see, um, uh, the climate in Rio was a very humid one, so it, it was always foggy, hazy, I mean, it, especially in the evenings when it, it would get really hot and I, I went in, in May and it was almost autumn there. So it's like when the seasons are changing, I guess, the weather there gets really humid, hot, you know, tropical, very tropical. So yes, it created some beautiful, beautiful haze, which I used on my advance. So, I called this image the faceless man in Rio. It was taken during sunset in Ipanema as well, Ipanema Beach. And I like the fact that due to the sun coming from behind the subject, there were barely any details showing, which resulted in silhouette, hence the title, The Faceless Man. With this image, I wanted to create something impressionistic and evocative. I wanted the viewer to think that I want to know who the man is and where he is going. Personally, I wanted to include a sense of mystery. And an interesting, and an interesting fact. I later on noticed that this man happened to be the same as this man. So, without knowing, I, I um, shot the, the, the same guy twice, which, which says a lot, because it, it truly means that what I, am, what I was looking for in shooting, it came up twice and I happened to shoot the same guy twice. Exactly, Kevin. That, that's what I that's what I was aiming for, uh, leaving the imagination to the viewer, and uh, it seems that I that I am doing so and leaving that up to you. So, from Brazil, we are heading off to Brooklyn Bridge in New York. Why New York is one of the most photographed places in the world. So much happens here that unique moments are around every corner almost. In certain areas of the city, you can walk a handful of blocks and feel like you are in a completely different world. I was in New York in September 2017. This is one of the very first street pho photographs I shot. And uh, while I was walking along Brooklyn Bridge, this woman struck me in a way that no other passerby did. The way she looked at me, her floating, and the way she walked, it's like she, it's like I stopped the moment and went to another era. It's like she took me to another moment in time, another neighborhood, another culture, and all while I was still on Brooklyn Bridge. This one and the next one are in fact uh, a set of images of this particular woman. I edited both of these images in black and white as I wanted to portray what you're left with when you strip away the lit and glamour of the city. I wanted to use highlights and shadows to sculpt a part through my composition, all without having to be concerned with relationships of color, as you will really A strong black and white street photo, as I'm sure you know, uh, can instantly make you feel that something about the moment is, is conveyed within the frame. In many cases, it takes what would otherwise be a completely disregarded moment in time and instead makes you concentrate on it and then contemplate on and consider its meaning, just like you are doing with the rest of my images. From New York, we are going to Greece. The next set of images were taken in Athens, Greece. Uh, Monastiraki was my favorite spot for a day of shooting, street photography in Athens. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been to Greece, this is one of the busier neighborhoods and it's always full of life. The character of the people in Athens is one of the best parts of the city for street photography too. Uh, they add interest to photos on their own. The character and the dogs and the people's eyes, honestly. Everything, all they got. This first image, to me, is shaped by a number of contrasts, most of them with regards to the meaning behind it rather than the aesthetic. However, I will start with the ones that is most obvious to the eye. The first contrast is the one you can see aesthetically with some harsh lighting where the guy, the, the, the guy wearing red 
on the staircase the most lit part of the image. Another contrast is the fact that this homeless guy is sitting on the stairs leading to a church. The guy is holding branded items and floating while begging for help in order to make a living. So let, let these contrasts sink in and make them sub they are subjective to each and every one of us. Another contrast is the guy that has just come out of church is walking away from the homeless and the needy. And I know he had just come out of church because I saw him with my own bare eyes and not because I wanted to make up a story, uh, a bad story on my image. I waited until this, this guy's face was hidden in order not to specify who the guy is, but rather to generalize and let this feeling be a subjective one and have a different impact on different viewers and really let us reflect on the situation going on in this whole image. The images I will be showing next are all a few people that struck me enough to capture to snap a picture of them. If you can notice uh, similarities between these people, you will understand my style and my thoughts, basically. I don't go around looking to capture glamorous people. Street photography, to me, is about capturing beauty and what seems to be boring in the most ordinary looking characters with the aim of giving them life through your work. And this is my aim, giving life to my subjects. This is a sweet image, but this is what I wanted to show. The everyday life of these locals, which is so close to everyone's everyday lives. Skopje, Macedonia. Uh, this image was taken back in February 2019 when we could all travel. The smoke coming out of the chimney was creating this, this soft, this soft little hazy, hazy look when uh, the smoke was hit by the sunlight. I waited until I got the subjects I needed to see in this image until these, these two people walked by. In this image, I mostly expressed, my, I mostly expressed myself through the colors, through the warm, muted tones, which are a consistent thing all throughout. And I also made use of a little grain in order to, to give that, that certain look and feel to this image. So, we are now in Vancouver. This is an image I've chosen from a series of images I took of this busker in Vancouver. I loved the warm soft light uh, hitting his face, shining down on his emotion while playing his guitar. To so the passers by, um, I wanted to capture another art, the art of music, which is Another kind of art that no matter what race or religion or nationality or gender one is, it also has the power to unite us, just like photography has. This image was taken in Belgium. I have titled it Walking into Heaven, <laughs> as that's what it looked like to me. My intent for taking this photo was to capture the drama created from the sunset. Um, uh, at, the, at the end, at the end of the little street, um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was in Ghent, in Ghent, in Belgium. I tried to further enhance this heaven feel by darkening the photo all around and just really focusing on the woman walking and the backlight coming from the behind, whilst enhancing the highlights. I gave this image a warm, golden look with a gradient of cool coming from the top part to a much warmer tone. This, this image was taken in Innsbruck, Austria. I think it's the first street photograph I've ever taken. Yes, it is. Uh, this woman was basically begging for help in the corner of a street in Innsbruck. 
And when she looked at me happily for a split second, it was so rewarding that I finally got someone on the street uh, to look directly at the camera while I take their photo. Um, that this was enough for me to snap her picture. Um, <laughs> so it is close to my heart yet this image because it was one of one of the first uh, very rewarding street photographs I felt uh, I took. This is also one of the first few. It was taken in Munich around five years ago. This guy was playing uh, the violin and serenading the passers-by. It was Christmas time, it was really cold. He was also a homeless person, unfortunately. When he saw me with my camera, he immediately covered his face. Unluckily or luckily, it's subjective. I believe that this image turned out better this way, as it felt as it felt the way the saying goes, when words fail, music speaks. And although we cannot listen to the guy's music through my image, I am hoping that my photograph can speak for itself. Now we came to Malta. <laughs> this image of the of Malta's dockyard uh, has taught me a lot about my style. I love looking for the boring stuff with the aim of making it look extraordinary. Primarily with the use of different techniques, uh, this time by using a reflection in a puddle, having close interactions with locals, and looking for little details as I've already mentioned. This image was taken from the Saint Lea point. I got, I was actually uh, doing uh, working on another photo session while whilst I decided to just take a picture of this, what people call a monstrosity, however, it struck me. And I can say that this image is one that I ended up loving in the end. My intent for taking this photo was to give a, an artistic and beautiful perspective to a site known to us as an eyesore in the Grand Harbor. I lowered down my camera as much as possible as I could to the spot of seawater in order to get this reflection. The photo was taken at around 8 a.m., hence the soft light. This photo of this Maltese traditional boat was taken in Falcara on one of my walks during the time when the pandemic started and we all had to do something instead of basically lose our minds. Uh, what I love most about this image is the shadows that were being cast by the boat itself and the complementary colors on the boat. The teals and oranges with the partially shadowed uh, Victoria Sebastians in the background, as you can see. Another photo taken in, this, in, the, in these areas. Uh, this image was shot at 7.30 in the morning. I edited it in slightly muted uh, pastel colors. I think that creating a good uncommon mood is more interesting than showing yet another pretty cloud. Uh, I wanted to create a dramatic mood with the help of the light coming from the break of dawn. I also like the little details in this image, like the woman walking the dog. Uh, while some people tend to think that the ship is actually an eyesore and that it shouldn't have been in my image and that the image would have been better without the ship. Uh, to me, if the ship wasn't present, I wouldn't have taken this shot to begin with. As to me, it's the point of interest in this image. And let's face it, there are tons and tons of photos of the Grand Harbor by Maltese photographers, which I love, which are, which are beautiful. However, I, I'm always looking, as you now are pretty much aware of, for the the ugly things in order to make them look beautiful through my my work. This one was taken at the Valletta um, uh, shore. It was taken during sunset. It was a very, very, very windy day. What I like most about, about this image, um, apart from the warm colors and the 
softness and the little detail. Um, what I like most about this image are the little, the little details, like the couple sitting uh, at the edge of the rocks. It makes you wonder what they are doing, what they are talking about, uh, who they are, and also the Maltese flag, the little birds, the little the, the, the Maltese um, landscape in the background. You can see the churches, the it's like a Maltese skyline all throughout in the background. So from Malta we are going back to Rio. This time, however, um, uh, we are we will not be looking at people. However, we will be looking at. I, I will just let you see. So I took this image of a helicopter taking off from the bottom of the Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio. I wanted to give this image a cinematic look, as it's quite a unique viewpoint to see a helicopter below you. In the background, the famous Christ the Redeemer statue uh, on the summit of Mount Corcovado. I titled the photo uh, on top of the city, and that is, that is what it really felt like to me while shooting it, and that is also what I wanted, what I want the viewer to feel like, what I want you to feel like when looking at it, as if you are the one standing on top of this view, above the buildings, above the mountains, and opposite one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, people sometimes ask me, are you okay after shooting this image? Were you just thrown off a plane or, or something? Uh, actually, I was, um, I was on a, while I was on a holiday in Rio, I went up the Sugarloaf Mountain uh, precisely to capture these views. And uh, there happened to be the helicopter tours going up from beneath this mountain. Th this mountain. There was a helipad right below us. And yes, I was lucky that one of, one of these helicopter tours uh, was starting off right when I was up there. This is a similar one. Uh, I happen to be at the right place at the right time um, and even though planes land often here in the Rio airport, when they do, they fly pretty close to the Sugarloaf Mountain, as you can see in this image. This picture was taken from the Santa Marta favela, so while I was in the favelas, I had this view. Imagine the view these, these people have. I mean, I, I, I was thinking, no wonder they're happy every day. I mean, you get to see this. From Rio, we're moving on to Slovenia. This image was taken in Bled, Slovenia, from the balcony of where I was staying. I remember when I looked out of the balcony, on my left was the Bled castle, and on my right was this beautiful, calming view of the Julian Alps. Every night before heading out, um, slightly before sunset, I used to look out the balcony in order to take the fresh air in mid-July. Mid and every day, I used to see a hot air balloon going on tour. Every day it made me wish I wasn't in this balloon, but I had no idea where it was leaving from, <laughs> where, where these tours started at, so I could only capture it. Uh, just by looking at it from my balcony. I felt such such calmness and such serenity. I waited and waited every day until this balloon drifted to a point where I could see it uh, in a symmetrical way, which I wanted for my photos composition, as I wanted the mountain lines to lead the viewer to the balloon. I also edited this image in a muted way, uh, it's like the first images I've shown uh, in Canada, where the most of the image is, ed is in, a, in a cool grayish tone, while the balloon is standing out in reddish and warmer tones. I also wanted th this image to be easy on the eye, as I want you all to feel calm while looking at it, to feel happy. I mean, it's, it's subjective, but that's what, that's what it feels to me. So 
that was on my right side of the balcony and this was on the left side. So it was opposite the view of the Julian Alps. Uh, what I love most about this image is the difference in tones and shades, temperatures and depth in the scenery. The right part of the image is set on a warmer, warmer shade as the sun is setting behind the castle further right, which is leaving the snow coming from behind the castle. And the left part, on the other hand, is set on a, on a cooler tone with teals and blues, which are often mostly associated to open spaces and to the sense of serenity. The contrast in tones represents the difference between day and night, as one part is still being hit by the soft sunlight, whilst the other part seems as if it was taken at a completely different time of day. Uh, this image of Lake Bled is actually a stitched panorama. It, uh, it has six uh, exposures of eight seconds each, and it was taken from a little sidewalk on Lake Bled. This was a case where, regardless of the situation, I had to make it work. With regards to equipment, I traveled pretty light, so I had no no tripod, light stands, I had absolutely nothing. Uh, I just placed my camera on the edge of the wooden sidewalk, set a timer, as I had no remote either, and just hoped this would turn out fine. I moved the camera bit by bit until I had enough shots to stitch this one image. As you can see, the tones are again, there are again a number of, of warm, a number of cool tones, it's, it's quite balanced uh, with regards to composition. I broke the rule of thirds once again, but I feel that it worked, so I'm happy I did. From Slovenia, we're going back to New York this time. This image was taken from one of the windows on top of the Rockefeller building in New York. During my stay in New York, I hoped every day to be able to book a tour of the Rockefeller Center during sunset on a clear day. However, the only space I managed to, to book in order to go up there was on a gloomy day, which I think turned out for the better eventually. I ended up liking this gloomy look that the clouds were giving on the skyscrapers as it really emphasized the majesty of the Empire State right in front of me. I gave this image a warm look as I wanted my viewer to feel as if they're looking over the New York City skyline from the comfort and warmth of their own homes, through their own windows and through their own eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. So, from New York we're heading to Paris. <coughs> This image was taken with a 24-70mm this time round through a little gap in the intricate lampposts which line Pont Alexandre in Paris. This bridge is Paris's most elegant bridge, in my opinion. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful river crossings I've ever seen. It's so rich, uh, the colours, the architecture, it's, it's beautiful. It was a rainy day and it left, it left little drops of water in the gaps beneath the lampposts, hence the little reflective surface in the image, which was just this big. Obviously, I had the option to shoot this image without any obstructions, as the famous Eiffel Tower could be seen from almost everywhere in Paris. However, I chose to photograph it through a little part of another Parisian landmark. To me, this conveys the feeling that we live in, in such a small world that a 300 meter structure can be photographed through a 10 centimeter gap, which is what I decided to do myself. So, this is, these are the majestic Niagara Falls. Uh, this image of the, of the falls was taken from a viewpoint literally a few meters away from the very edge of the horseshoe falls. 
My intent for taking this photo was to give a different perspective to the falls, one that is slightly more dramatic and more bold, uh, not the usual touristy photos seen everywhere. Uh, I wanted to really capture something so strong and powerful in a simple way, a simple composition that is still able to portray the power created by the force of the falling water. So, back to New York City. I try not to make it boring, so I switch on from a country to another. I hope that works for you as well. So, this is the Radio City Music Hall. It's an entertainment venue located in New York City's Rockefeller Center. Its nickname is the Showplace of the Nation, and it was for a time the leading tourist destination in the city. In fact, its interior was declared still landmark in 1978. The neons and the sign outside this venue were something that struck, struck me every time I passed them on New York 6th Avenue, which I later muted a little in order to give my own style and touch to this image. The image was taken at around 6.45 p.m. Uh, I was in New York in September. Uh, it was around the last 15 minutes of the golden hour in New York. As the sun being low enough behind the skyscrapers to give that little flare from between the building and the background and my actual subject. As you can see, this image is quite an infinite one, even though it's supposed to be so brightly lit because of the sun facing, I mean, directly, directly facing the sun. However, I turned, I turned supposedly bright image into, into an image of my style. And as you can see, uh, it, it's not something you would expect to, to look at every day, you know, I mean, if you think of viewing an image where the sun can directly be seen, you would expect bright blue colors, warm, warm colors, you know. However, this is part of what I've been saying all throughout the webinar. Um, the, the muted tones and the complementary colors are once again showing in this image. So. Uh, my knowledge on cars, I find parked on the street is limited. However, I find all cars particular in their own way. I love photographing cars, some more than others. Each car has its own unique character, and it's fun to imagine some of the adventures that these cars have had throughout the decades. I mostly choose to photograph cars whenever they stand out to me, or whenever I am able to visualize a great image where both the car and the background play an important part in the composition. The colors, shapes, everything surrounding. This image was taken in Anchorage. It's a town in Alaska. And this car stood out to me because of its shape and color. The way the light fell onto the right places and highlighted the car's shape. And in order to make my image more interesting, I used the background to my advantage. It's mainly made up of geometrical shapes, as you can see, all in black and white, which created a nice contrast. I moved accordingly to place the line dividing the white and black exactly in the center of my image, and I darkened the bottom of the image and the majority of the rest of it, as I wanted the viewer's eye to just be on the upper car shape details and the contrast of the whole image. My intent for this photo wasn't just for it to be another image of a car, but a whole composition and a puzzle which happens to include a car, which is the main point of interest, mostly because of its shine and of it being the, the, the most uh, saturated part of my image. So. The image I will be showing you next is my last image for today. Uh, it is uh, an image of a 1966 Corvette. Please correct me if there are any uh, car fanatics and I'm wrong. Uh, it was also taken in Anchorage, Alaska, inside a parking lot. Apart from the fact that this is a beautiful classic car, 
the color contrast on Anchorage is Fourth Avenue is, is amazing. Uh, part of the reason is the bright orange building, as you can see. Some might wonder why I broke half the car out. And the reason is that I didn't want to add any distraction from the rest of the building, which would not be complementing to the image. I propped it tightly so as to leave, to, so as to leave the rest of the imagination to the viewer and just show a little detail with a splash of this contrasting and complementary color in my image, as usual, as I always love to do. Um, I would just like to conclude uh, by saying something I truly believe in. As you all know, beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. What is beautiful to you may not necessarily be beautiful to the next photographer. Just like a great novel, the subject matter of great photography and great street photography is subjective. But I believe that one should trust their own eye and you will not be disappointed with the outcome.